Welcome everyone to the 2020 annual meeting of the membership of the Pinehurst Country Club. This meeting is called to order. I am Steve Griswold, president of the Board of Governors for 2020, and here in the Outlook Room at the club this afternoon, I am joined by my fellow 2020 governors, Vice President Joe McCullough, Secretary Treasurer Betsy Mitchell, Tina Arno, David Collins, Mike Fusselball, Vicki Hancock, Brian Thomas, Jen Tomlin, and Treasurer Kevin Shimkus. We also have Club Manager Ben Bridgers and a few others who will be introduced later. I would like to welcome those of you that are watching this live on Facebook and to those who will watch it later on YouTube. We're here in December of, 20, we're here in de December of 2020, and let me tell you what a difficult year this has been for everyone. Despite the challenges, your Pinehurst Country Club Board of Governors met every month in 2020, either in person, via phone dial-in, or in Zoom, on behalf of our nearly 5,000 members. Although beginning in March, COVID-19 shut down the resort, which resulted in the layoffs and or furloughs of many PCC employees, your board worked with Pinehurst Management to meet our stated mission of assisting in the planning, coordinating, oversight, and communications of the social and recreational activities of Pinehurst Country Club, and to keep as many programs and services open and available to membership as possible. Throughout the year, the board's six standing committees made up of board members, PCC staff members, and numerous member volunteers continued their mission to enhance the member experience as much as possible. In spite of COVID, as will be noted by our Board of Governors Committee Chairs who will provide you with a review of their committee highlights momentarily. In addition, through your generosity and financial support, our membership raised many thousands of dollars to support the Pinehurst Employees Assistance Fund, which helped provide food and essentials for hundreds of employees this summer when the resort was shut down. So on behalf of your Board of Governors, I would like to thank all of you who were able to donate and help make a difference to our employees' lives. I would also be highly remiss if I did not take this time to recognize our outstanding club staff, led by club manager Ben Bridgers, for their efforts to keep Pinehurst Country Club running during this pandemic. Ben and his team, Nancy Sadler, Jessica Cunningham, Chef Doug Knopp, Gina Brooker, Brian Metter, Bella Ventola, Mac Marksdale, Brian Fahey, Cole Stiles, Ryan Duckworth, Christy Weaver, Taylor Davis, Matt Downing, Amy Bonnell, David Mead, and many others work tirelessly to keep as many functions of the club running as possible for us. I would also be remiss if I failed to thank Bob Farron and his staff for their tireless efforts to keep our golf courses open and available to membership during the resort shutdown. While many aspects of our lives were disrupted or put on hold this year, our club staff has done their damnedest to keep our club available for our use, especially during the middle part of this year when only a skeleton staff was being used to keep the club up and running. And we all owe them a tremendous amount of gratitude for their efforts. So Ben, on behalf of the Board of Governors and the membership, I want to publicly thank you and your staff for everything you all have accomplished in this year of years. Well done. At this time, I will call upon Board Vice President Joe McCullough to highlight his activities, and he will be followed by our standing committee chairs to highlight their activities for the year. Joe. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Bella, for the cleanup. So this year, the Office of the VP, along with the Bylaws Committee, consisting of Tina Ar Arno, Betsy uh, Mitchell, and myself, performed a major overhaul of the Pinehurst Country Club Board of Governors Bylaws. 
Among other revisions, the revised bylaws stipulated that beginning in 2020, the election of governors be as paperless as possible. To that end, beginning in 2020, a method of online voting was established and utilized. The vast majority of voting members utilized the online voting method this year. Additionally, the Board of Governors election was moved to the month of October. This shortened the election process by one month and facilitated the newly elected board members becoming familiar with the workings of the board. In an effort to provide the Pinehurst Country Club members with the vision management has for our club, the Long Range Planning Committee of the Board of Governors, consisting of, my, of Betsy Mitchell, Ben Bridgers, and myself, continued to work with management and developed a list of potential capital improvements. The, the ability to carry out these items on the list forward in 2020 was significantly impacted by the outbreak of COVID-19. So that is my report, and I'd like to ask Mike Fussabaugh, who is the communications uh, chairman, to come up. Thanks, Joe, and thanks for cleaning up here, Bella. Appreciate that. The Communications Committee this year had uh, a number of things that we worked on, and I'd like to highlight just four, uh, four areas. We provided counsel to management and staff on the structure and content of the annual member survey. We also helped review the results of that survey. We provided communications to support the Board of Governor Election Committee, the Holiday Fund Committee, the Special Recognition Program, this annual meeting, and all standing committees. We provide a weekly content for the Members' Corner that's published every week, every Friday in the Members' Minute. We conducted three Media 101 training sessions to educate members, and Bella reviewed the use of technology to assist all members with their technical issues and questions. And now I'd like to turn the microphone over to the membership committee chair, Vicki Hancock. Thanks, Mike, and thanks, Bella. I've had the opportunity to lead the membership committee for the past four years. I've served on this committee for a total of six years. In 2020, I've been pleased to work with 10 member volunteers representing a variety of membership levels, interests, and family structures. They are Tina Arno, our assistant chair, Margaret Cherokino, Dave Gibbons, Jim Hart, Nancy Heilman, Frank Maroy, Julie McNichol, Janet Sharp, and Luke Zimmerman. Our membership department representative has been Brian Metter, and I thank all of the committee members for their participation, critical thinking, and enthusiasm for our club. To summarize our initiatives for the year, at our monthly committee meetings, we have done quite a lot, highlighted by reviewing membership numbers by category, and discussing ways to increase those numbers and upgrade members to higher levels. We've provided input to membership staff for new member recruitment programs, member programs, and member development activities. We've provided input to management on member questions and concerns related to membership programs so that we can clarify and make sure they're presented accurately. Brian Metter continues to tell us that we have had a banner year for membership queries averaging about 120 each month. 
And I understand that we convert about 65% of those queries into paid memberships. Great statistic. In my opinion, the most enjoyable activities in, our, in which our committee members participate are those that involve direct contact with our newest members and member prospects. This year, we've personally contacted over 300 new members to welcome them to our club with emails, phone calls, and invitations to meet for various activities. We've participated in monthly new member orientations, orient uh, socials, and recruitment events from January through March before virus restrictions prevented us from participating anymore. I will personally miss my active involvement as an ambassador for our club through my activities on this committee. It's been one of the most satisfying responsibilities of my experience as a member of the Board of Governors. Thank you. And now I'd like to welcome David Collins, the chair of Tennis, Lawn Bowls, Croquet, and Pickleball. Hello, everyone. Um, I'd like to start out with just Vicki alluded or described what the acronym TLCP is. Uh, a lot of people don't recognize that, but we're the one committee that supports all the other sports other than golf here at uh, here at the club. Um, we meet monthly with Pinehurst staff to discuss events and activities happening in the TLCP sports to report on playing conditions and equipment, and to commu communicate issues relevant to the committee. We work very closely with the membership and communications committee to find ways to encourage new and existing Pinehurst members to participate in these sports and to make sure all members get event information in a timely manner. The committee is, like the golf committee, is, is a structured committee. Uh, we have an assistant chair, Brian Thomas, this year, um, who's a member of the Board of Governors. Brian and I are appointed by the president at the beginning of the year to uh, lead this particular committee. We work with Matt Downing, Amy Bonnell, and David Mead, um, and they are the sports staff from uh, the club that represent the um, TLCP Sports, and then we have the president of the Lawn Bowls Association, Martha Nielsen, the president of the Croquet Association, Elaine Moody, um, and we have some members at large uh, that also help out with, uh, with the committee's functions. In spite of the pandemic, as Steve mentioned earlier, um, and reduced professional staffing during this time, as many of you know, uh, we had to lay off people for a period of time and then gradually bring them back as we were able to. Um, but in spite of the lean staffing in the beginning, um, the membership was still afforded safe access to all of the TLCP sports to include open play, several tournaments, and resort events. Now this was accomplished not only through the tireless staff commitment, but safety protocols established by Matt and his staff and the TLCP sport leaders, and the understanding and cooperation of all the members that enjoyed the activities. Secondly, we did manage to improve several facilities within the TLCP uh, activities. We replaced two cracked backboards with the lawn bowls. We replaced the broken garage door that was on the lawn bowl shed. We refurbished all the tennis courts with new clay, expanded the number of pickleball courts from six to eight, and painted all eight courts. 
Amy Bunnell and David Mead were certified as teaching professionals by the USPA. We were able to trial a new court reservation system for both tennis and pickleball, and we updated the first aid kits for all the lawn sports. In terms of communication, we were able to post new signs at the croquet and lawn ball courts to try and control some of the cross-court traffic. We posted emergency contact signs for all of the TLCP sports. We coordinated the TLCP calendar and utilized the member minute for all the event announcements. And then we took a unique approach with tennis this year. In January, we held a town hall meeting gathering input from all the tennis players in the club to help consolidate and coordinate the activities for the coming year. So I want to thank all of the committee members for all of their hard work. Especially, I want to convey again our gratitude to Ben, you and your staff for all that you were able to do. And uh, a special kudos to Matt Downing and his group as well. At this time, I would like to recognize Tina Arno, our Pool and Fitness Committee Chair, and let Tina come on up. Tina? This year, I had the honor of chairing the Pool and Fitness Committee, working with my fellow board member, Vicki Hancock, as co-chair. We also had 10 at-large members from PCC membership. This year, we welcomed Taylor Davis to our committee as the new Pool and Fitness Manager, no, the new Pool Manager, and Christy Weaver was named Tennis and Pro and Fitness Manager. We were pleased to be able to open the pools and provide ways to stay fit while being compliant with COVID restrictions. The pool at number nine also added water classes this year for members. We were also very pleased with the opening of the lake in the fall. Plans are being made for a grand opening in 2021 with some additional new amenities. And I would like to thank my committee members and the PCC staff for working with Vicki and myself to better the experience for the members here at PCC. And now I'd like to turn the microphone over to Golf Committee Chair Jen Tomlin. Thanks, Tina. Thank you, Bella, for keeping us safe. What a pleasure, an absolute pleasure it was, working with the 23 volunteer ambassadors of the Golf Committee this, this year. In addition to listening to members' concerns, um, whether they're negative or positive, and elevating them up and addressing them to working collectively and collaboratively with the PC staff to deliver a couple of important things this year. Um, this year, walking trolleys, including privately owned, uh, are now allowed to be used on all of the Pinehurst courses. In 2019, the previous board and management did a great job in, in allowing carts or trolleys to be used on courses two, four, and nine. And the committee this year followed through and embellished that with working with management to be able to not just allow trolleys on all courses, 
but to allow privately owned trolleys with an annual membership on all courses. We also worked with management to see if additional benches couldn't be added to the walking courses two and four. Um, we had some benches in reserve and uh, Bob Fair and his team did a great job in refurbishing them and getting them out in strategic places so that um, we'd have more time to rest while we're playing those long walking courses. Um, we were able to work with management to update the pace of play cards, which will now include um, guidance on course restroom placements with a clear message um, on the consequences should the golfer elect not to use the restrooms but use the course. Um, members of the golf committee that are also organized uh, association leaders worked all this year to uh, start using the golf genius and for scoring and now we have almost all of them using that practice. Uh, we've reinstated the tournament debrief practices, which in essence are once the tournament is concluded, there will be a write-up as to what went great, what went maybe not so great and needs some improvement. Um, but it's a good document for the next person running the tournament to look at and see if they can run a, a much better tournament. Uh, we've also updated the golf tournament standards and guidelines um, that will be implemented in, on January of 2021 and we've implemented a process where there's a more active role in coordinating the golf tournament uh, event calendar to align with the schedule maintenance of the course uh, so working alongside all of our wonderful pros and Bob Farron and his maintenance team so that we mitigate the possibility of poor course conditions during um, any of our major tournaments. So there was a whole lot more that went on that um, I can't mention. There's not enough time, but I thank every one of the 23 members, my assistant chair, Mike Fusselball, and the PCC staff for uh, making it a great year for the golf committee. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Brian Thomas. I'm chairman of the House Committee. And to let you know, we here at the House Committee get ideas from you. We come up with ideas, we create plans, and we assist with events. And we, most of all, we promote those events to you. This year, the House Committee activities were severely curtailed by the virus shutdown, which canceled a lot of events. But I wanna thank member relations, and the food and beverage personnel here at PCC who helped plan events and then had to cancel them. We were, we were dreaming of big things this year, but they operated also for everything that you got with 60% of the employees they had just a year ago. And a lot of these employees worked one place earlier in the day and another place later on in this shift. Members were also introduced to using takeaway or to-go food and then picking up at various dining facilities. Remember, you can use your dining card also. With social distancing and mask wearing, we had wine dinners and tastings, which were held at the main club and at our signature clubhouses on a more frequent basis. Our restaurants at the main club, seven and nine, are right now, and will continue through the winter, closed one day a week. Number seven on Monday, number nine on Tuesday, and the main club on Wednesday. And on Wednesday, all PCC members 
are invited to make a reservation to have dinner at either seven or nine. We held a ladies' special event this year, which involves showing some of our community involvement by introducing the women on our village council, not in the political vein, but get to know them personally. One of the big things for our club is our annual holiday fund. I have a committee of Sue, Jenny, John, Clem, and Kevin who assisted me. And actually, they did a lot of the work. I just point them in the right direction. Our employees are going to enjoy the gifts that we give them this year, and we're going to distribute them next week. You as members have done an awful lot. The Employee Assistance Fund, the beginning of this year, was outstanding. And then when we started our holiday fund on November 1st, you stepped back up to the plate. And I want to thank all the members of Pioneers Country Club for what they have done. And our employees will appreciate it. Thank you. And now I'll turn the mic back over to Steve. As you can see, these committees have all been busy this year despite the pandemic. Each of these committees include volunteer at-large members from within our membership who help provide additional member perspective and ideals for our various activities. Each year, we put out a call to the entire membership to request at-large members for our various committees, and this year is no different. If you are interested in volunteering to serve on one or more of our committees, you can find out more information on our respective committees and fill out an application to serve by going to the PCC website, click on My Club, Board of Governors, and 2020 Member Committees. This is your opportunity to help create the change you want by serving. Each year, the Board recognizes a member or members who have provided a significant service to the membership of Pioneers Country Club, not necessarily only over the past year, but potentially over a period of years. At this time, I would like to call on Vicki Hancock, Chair of our 2020 Board of Governors Special Recognition Award Committee. Vicki? Thanks, Steve, and thanks again, Bella. I've had the privilege of acting as chair of this year's Special Recognition Award Committee. Joining me on the committee were two members at large, Don Irvin and Tim Weish. Many thanks to them for our effective work together. Since 2009, the Board of Governors selects for recognition e each year one or two members who exemplify volunteer service at Pinehurst Country Club. We search for individuals who have a background of volunteering at PCC events or activities while demonstrating an extraordinary commitment in support of the membership. Integral to the selection is that the award recognize ideals and practices of previous award recipients, traits of friendly public service, and inspiration to fellow volunteers. 
The board began soliciting nominations for this award starting in August with notices in the member minute, thanks Mike Fusselbaugh, and the award guidelines and nomination form are always available for review and download on the PCC member website. The deadline for nominations this year was October 15th. This year we're pleased to receive, we were pleased to receive five nominations for this award. The committee reviewed the nominations, selected several finalists, and sought additional input from other PCC members and staff who were familiar with each finalist's contributions. We developed and submitted a report to the board by mid-November. We recommended our winners for their consideration and the board approved our recommendations unanimously at our monthly meeting on November 30th. Today I'm pleased to introduce this year's two special recognition award recipients, Martha Nilsson and Elaine Moody. Come on up. I am so happy about this. <laughs> Starting with Martha. She's, Martha Nielsen has demonstrated an extraordinary commitment to support the PCC membership by providing leadership and direction for the Lawn Bowls Association, abbreviated LBA. Martha joined our club in 2014 as vice president of the, and, and served as vice president of the LBA in 2016. We got her serving right away. She served as LBA president for the past four years and also represents her sport on the TLCP committee. Martha is a quiet leader who goes about her business without hesitation while achieving outstanding results. She has built a loyal team who share her passion and vision for the sport. With this team, Martha routinely participates in monthly new member orientations when we're allowed to participate in them and new member social outings, offering members of all ages the chance to learn and play lawn bowls. Lawn bowls is the only sport not currently served by a professional staff person at PCC. However, Martha has become a certified coach and volunteers endless hours fitting bowls and instructing members and guests of all skill levels. She discreetly ensures that the playing rink is properly maintained, communicating routine and best practices to the club's maintenance crew and the tennis and lawn sports director. Martha introduced open play on Tuesday evenings with free instruction followed by dinner at the club. In addition to open Tuesdays, as they're called, special events like TLCP, Try TLCP and themed events such as the popular Margaritaville Martha also assists with the coordination, scoring, and instruction for resort guest matches and corporate outings. She does everything. She has successfully hosted interclub matches and brought the East Coast Challenge, a regional tournament between the Northeast and Southeast divisions to our club. Martha brought more recognition to our club as well, herself competing and bringing home the National Open silver medal for pairs from the National Lawn Bowls Championship held in Phoenix, Arizona. Martha's persistent efforts and quiet professionalism have earned her the respect of the PCC community and Lawn Bowls peers at the regional and national levels. And now on to Elaine Moody. Elaine is the current president of the Pinehurst Croquet Club and has been elected to that position several times in the past 10 years. She's the glue that keeps the club vibrant and moving forward, bringing boundless energy and commitment to the club and its members. Membership has increased significantly during her tenure as president in 2019 and 2020 due to her innovative activities to introduce Pinehurst Country Club members to the game. Especially noteworthy is her outreach to the national and international croquet uh, world, excuse me, which has resulted in Pinehurst being recognized as a croquet destination. One of the events held here in 2019, the Solomon Trophy Tournament, was a competition between two countries. Elaine is regularly involved with the organization of multi-day events, coordinating players, volunteers, Pinehurst Country Club, North Carolina, Carolina Croquet District President, and the World Croquet Federation, as well as the day-to-day -day activities of our, on our croquet courts. You can see her out there all the time. In addition, she also guides the social direction of the club, including festivities, lodging and meals for guests, and marketing. 
The governing body for croquet in the U.S. is the United States Croquet Association, abbreviated USCA, which has over 100 clubs across the nation as members. In March of this year, the USCA recognized Elaine's remarkable leadership by voting her the 2019 USCA Club President of the Year. Elaine's tireless and enthusiastic support of the Croquet Club has helped grow the sport in Pinehurst and won recognition for our club nationally and internationally as a croquet destination. Congratulations to both of you and welcome you. Steve for the presentation. And this is the plaque that will be displayed downstairs of our special recognition award winners, of which both of their names have been added, and we are proud to have you on this plaque. And thank you again for your service and what you've done for our membership. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I would also like to thank Vicki and her committee for the work on this and for our members for nominating all those who were nominated. We certainly appreciate it. As our 2020 board calendar year draws to a close today, we would be remiss in not saying thanks and farewell to our departing governors. Mike Fussabaugh, who you saw earlier, has served three years on the Board of Governors from 2018 through 2020. He's chaired the Pool and Fitness Committee for two years, and this year was the Communications Committee Chair. He has also served as the Assistant Chair of the House and Golf Committees. Pinehurst Country Club, as a way of saying thanks to our members who serve on the Board of Governors, makes a monetary donation to that governor's charity of choice, and Mike has requested that his be made to the Backpack Pals of Moore County. Thank you, Mike. Vicki Hancock has served six years from 2015 to 2020 and chaired the communications committee for two years and as she mentioned earlier, the membership committee for four. She's also the assistant chair of membership for TLCP and the pool and fitness committees. And her charity of choice is the Moore Free and Charitable Clinic. Again, thank you, Vicki. I had the pleasure of serving three years on the board from 2018 to now. I chaired the golf committee for two years and served as board president this year. I also served as the assistant chair for both membership and communications in my charity of choice is the Moore County Literacy Center. Thank you, Mike and Vicki and all our governors for giving up your time and also providing exemplary service to the membership of Pioneers Country Club over the last several years. For your information, our board has nine voting members who are each elected for a three-year term. Each year we have three governors whose terms expire and therefore we hold annual elections to select three new members. Since we just farewelled our three departing members, that means we had to have an election to select three new ones. Our election committee this year consisted of Chairwoman Tina Arno, along with at-large members Bill Colmer and Pat Hagan, with Joe McCullough and myself assisting. In January of this year, the Board of Governors stated its intent to move to an online versus paper ballot system for voting. And through Tina Arno's leadership, with a lot of work by Pat Hagan, this became a reality. The election ran from the 1st through 31st of October and was conducted in accordance with the bylaws of the Board of Governors of Piners Country Club. To compare our 2019 paper ballot versus our 2020 online ballot elections, in the 2019 board election, we had eight candidates vying for three spots. We processed 674 paper ballots, of which 49 were deemed invalid. 
The remaining 625 ballots represented 1,442 valid votes. This year, we had seven candidates who submitted valid petitions to run for the three open slots on the board. 800 ballots were cast by members, of which 715 were valid. 85 ballots were deemed invalid by the election committee due to either incorrect member numbers or being duplicate ballots. The remaining 715 ballots request, represent a total of 1,649 valid votes cast for the seven candidates. Of those 715 ballots, 674 were submitted through the online process and 41 were paper ballots submitted via the ballot box by email or mailed in. Our election committee processing time to validate ballots for those two elections went from approximately eight hours with the paper ballots to just about 20 minutes with the electronic process. To say this was a success is putting it mildly. After all the valid votes were tabulated, Dave Gibbons, Mike Pierce, and Derek Pazzini were elected by the membership to serve a three-year term on the Board of Governors. And their term started today. So gentlemen, please come up here. We have Dave Gibbons, Mike Pierce, and Derek Pazzini. Welcome to the board, gentlemen, and thank you in advance for your service. Go ahead and take your seats. Thank you. Just prior to the start of this virtual meeting, the 2021 Board of Governors met to choose their slate of officers for this year, and I am pleased to announce that Joe McCullough will be serving as president, Jen Tomlin as Vice President, and Mike Pierce as Secretary Treasurer. Congratulations to all three, and thank you in advance for your service. So with that recap of the year, I will now turn the floor over to Club Manager Ben Bridgers for his annual report to the membership. Ben. Thank you, Bella. Thank you, Steve. And hello, Piners Country Club members. And thank you for tuning in to our first ever total virtually membership meeting. I hope that you and your families are healthy and staying strong. 2020 has certainly been a challenging year for, for all of us, but I'm very thankful to be standing here in front of you today to discuss where we are as a club and what the future holds for us. First, I would like to thank outgoing President Steve Griswold and the Board of Governors for their outstanding leadership and continued support of our management team. The support and communication they have shown us, and our, my, myself and our team, is much appreciated. I'd also like to thank the entire membership for their support in 2020. Member donations made in the early spring on behalf of the Employee Assistant Foundation who were laid off were close to $100,000. This allowed us to assist with providing food, supplies, and gift cards for our employees during the six weeks that much of the property was shut down. I'm sure that 2020 will be a year that all of us will remember. I was in Nashville, Tennessee, watching a concert when it was announced that the ACC tournament was canceled. The daily national briefings came on talking about the virus and the world felt like it was crumbling. When I arrived back at Piners the next day, we began preparations to close our three hotels and lay off hundreds of employees. There was a great deal of uncertainty as our leadership team met daily to make decisions about a situation we had never encountered. Who would ever have thought that the Carolina Hotel would shut down for two months? When it reopened on May 22nd, we did so with our Piners promise to ensure the safety of our members, resort guests, and staff. 
We certainly have had some bumps along the way, but as we stand here today, the majority of our employees are back to work and we've had a solid fall season. Member golf rounds are upwards to 30% above prior year and we've, got, we've added 85 additional golf members. While the pandemic is going strong across the country and world, I'm ex extremely proud of our team of employees for their diligence and commitment to the serve the Pioneers Country Club members. The two month stay at home period was challenging for everyone, but we hope that by keeping golf, tennis, pickleball, and lawn sports facilities operational, we hope to provide some sanity and normalcy to your lives and ours. We are grateful that we were able to operate under restrictions while many clubs around the country canceled events and closed completely. Our team followed the safety guidelines and except for one tournament, which we actually changed, we, ran, we were able to host every single golf event on our calendar. Safely executing the events required much forethought and creativity, such as our food and beverage teams providing to-go food options at number nine and PCC, serving thousands of meals. After a phenomenal 2019, we were poised and ready for an even better 2020. There were some great capital plans in the works, but most of those were put on hold or postponed. We stayed the course and were able to get the Beach Club project finally done, even though it will not have zip lines and slides like in originally projected. The pavilion, snack shack, and overall look of the Beach Club is first class, and I know Nancy Sadler and her team will add, will, will add some great events next year when we're able to gather as well as we're going to add some additional water amenities to enhance the fun factor out there. Another project that was highly anticipated was a, was a significant upgrade to the current pickleball courts over at number six. Instead of being able to, to totally resurface the courts as we had planned, we were at least able to fill in the cracks, repaint the entire surfaces, and repair two of the unusable courts, now giving us a total of eight courts. The majority of other capital dollars were spent on operating needs, such as additional radios for golf, waste enclosures, podiums around the facility, and culinary equipment in need of repair. We also talked last year a lot about technology enhancements, and unfortunately those have been pushed back until the spring, summer of 2021, but I'm excited about these upcoming improvements for the membership. We'll be adding a new real-time tea time system and an accounts receivable program that will give you the ability as a member to see your account usage as well as pay your bill online. This will also require implementing a totally new website and mobile app. When it comes to technology, we anticipate there will be some initial glitches, so I please ask that you be patient with us as we work through the transition. As we move into the final weeks of 2020, we're certainly looking forward to 2021 and all the upcoming projects we have ahead of us. Earlier this year, Pinehurst was announced as the first anchor site of the USGA. This announcement took us back to our heritage when Richard Tufts, the grandson of Pinehurst founder James Walker Tufts, was president of the USGA in the mid-1950s. We're excited for the opportunity to work closely with the USGA and offer them space on the main campus here for a USGA golf house. With this announcement, we have secured five U.S. Opens in the next 27 years, and the USGA has promised to bring in millions of dollars to the Pinehurst area and state. A link has been provided on the member's website to show you the footprint of the USGA buildings, as well as the 90 plus parking lot area that will be added to the facility. In conjunction of this USGA project is a 36 room lodge that will be, the proposed site is overlooking the cradle to host players for the championships as well as hotel guests for the future. The projected areas chosen will force us to relocate the croquet courts and remove six tennis courts. We realize there are many concerns regarding the overall look of the facility, compaction for parking, and changes in offerings for members. Our commitment to you, the membership, is to ensure we, we continue with our heritage of lawn sports, provide appropriate parking based on village requirements, and most importantly, continue to grow and set the property up for the next 125 years. Once construction timelines are final for the USGA buildings and the lodge, we will do our best to share that information with you.
Currently, the construction is not planned to begin until winter of 2021 or early 2022. As we begin facility preparations for the 2024 U.S. Open, we have plans this January, February to enhance the 91st hole, add squ square footage to the main golf shop for championship merchandise, and construct a permanent pavilion bar at the cradle, which was there in the initial concept. As we move forward, we plan to identify and work with a consulting firm to help us make the best use of space for pickleball, tennis, and croquet as we have many opportunities to improve our facilities. As many of you know, it's been our long range plan to enhance the clubhouse at Piners number six and the downstairs locker room here at the main club, at the members club. We also need a long term plan for fitness as the Olmstead Village Fitness Center, which was, is supposed to be a temporary facility. The members retail shop, also at the Don Pageant Learning Center, really belongs here in the main clubhouse. The firm we will hire will assist us in identifying what the best use of land and facilities are and will provide us an overall plan on pickleball, lawn sports, tennis, and much more. Some of you have probably heard me say that membership now represents a third of our business, along with social, leisure, travel, and group business. Due, the, due to the current national economic situation this year, we are not anticipating that we would experience our largest member growth in a decade as more people are relocating to Piners to play golf. We're hoping to continue this trend, yet we understand there are concerns about tee time compaction that we need to keep an eye on. Although business this year was certainly better than we expected, our hotel, our hotel rooms were, were down significantly. Along with the drastic reduction in corporate hotel business, our total resort and club food and beverage revenues have been greatly reduced to only to be able to use utilize 50% of our dining areas and 30% for banquet capacity. Profitable events like weddings were still held this year, but at a greatly reduced numbers. As a result, these revenue losses have made us put a premium on where we're going to spend our money in the future. The main reason for sharing this information is so you understand that we're unable to fix everything immediately. There's been lots of talk about what needs to be fixed and what we'd like to do and um, you know, it's just, it's just going to take a little bit more time than we, uh, we all had anticipated. But the last 10 years, we've improved significantly by restoring Piners number two and renovating Piners number four. We renovated the members club for daily, daily dining and banquets. We added a wonderful pool complex, the cradle short course that many of you enjoy today, and the beach club project. All of these great additions were added without any form of assessment to the membership. At this time, I would like to address the questions that were submitted prior to the meeting. I'd like to thank the members who took the time to make the submissions, and I hope to cover as many as possible. So, I had, had lots of questions regarding golf. Um, some of the main ones regarding uh, cart path, tee box, and facility repair. Um, you know, many of the members may know this if you've been here for a long time, but Bob Farron, Director of Grounds and Golf Course Maintenance, had his, uh, all of his superintendents um, basically find out the linear feet necessary for cart paths across the, uh, the property. The, he identified the total linear feet as well as what needed to be fixed immediately. Um, we allocate a specific amount of, rev of, uh, of expense dollars in our budget every year, which Bob has probably doubled this year, um, but it's, it's there for us to, to make those enhancements. I think what you're going to see is, you know, we've got um, probably a total of, you know, over $5 million in, in total cart paths across the property. And I think, um, you know, as we go, there's going to be some areas that are cart path and some areas that are sand. Um, obviously, course two, course four um, are sand and, and course three. So we're working to to kind of blend the sand in with the, with the actual paved cart path. You know, every year, um, and I think Grizz mentioned it earlier, but uh, we have, um, you know, we tend to airify the golf courses. We're very fortunate that we've got Bermuda greens. If you look back at uh, when we had bent grass, I would say the golf courses for Bob and his team have never been better. And I think that's due to the fact that we went basically all Bermuda. Um, 
you know, we do air five Bermuda every couple years as opposed to every year. And I think that uh, that gives us a little time when we're air fine those golf courses, we make any of those necessary repairs. Um, if you remember on course three, uh, we took out the back tee there on, um, on 14 and kind of fixed the cart path there. Um, but those are the times where we really try to identify. So anytime you think of the 14 day time period that we're air fine golf courses, that's when we would work on bunkers, um, uh, basically cart pass and, and redo any tee boxes of any kind. Uh, there was some comments regarding tee boxes, red, yellow, white, green, all, all of them are in need of, of some repair on, on some parts of our golf courses. So, um, you know, we, we'll do any of those uh, we can during that time frame. There was a question regarding golf uh, about blind spot cameras on courses. Uh, I've worked with our director of IT uh, for most of the year with Kyle over at number eight and Matt over here at the main club uh, trying to find the correct um, software, so to speak, that would uh, enhance that. But uh, we're still working on it. We have not fixed it. And I think, you know, we're going to have to commit to, to either taking them off and restarting over or, or find another program. So we're, we'll still be working on that in 2021. Um, course three. Um, so we went with the, uh, you know, we heard from feedback from the membership last year regarding not, not as many members loved course number three as they used to. Um, so what we did was we tried to make it where more resort guests would enjoy number three. So we, we added the smaller flags and kind of gave it its own, own identity. Um, I'm not sure it's worked thus far, but I think it's, I think people that do play it are enjoying it. Uh, but the question was regarding course number five and, and, and one, and w would we do the same there? Um, right now, at the current time, we do not have any, any you know, uh, commitments to, to do that to course one or course five. But I would tell you that the, the golf management team is interested in, in having co those courses have their own identity. Tee times. So obviously, tee times are a big, uh, a big deal. That's why most members join Piners and, and Piners Country Club. Um, you know, when we started the online tea time system in 2013, uh, it was at midnight. Uh, we did move it to 11 o'clock last year, um, maybe two years ago, but it has worked uh, well. Um, you know, I talked about technology a little bit earlier in, in a real-time tea time system. At this time, we're not going to make any changes until we incorporate the new system because um, there's currently a resort tea time system and a member tea time system that has to be imported every night. I'm not sure that everybody knows that. So um, when you have imports like that, sometimes we have issues. I know some of the, the board members in the room have had issues with starting times as well as um, some of you that are listening in. So um, I'm hopeful that as we move into one system, you don't have to worry about, I saw a two o'clock open tomorrow then you call and you don't get it. So I think those, those kind of issues that we're having as we incorporate that new tee sheet um, will assist us. Tee time availability. Obviously in April and, and May when the Carolina Hotel was closed down, um, you know, course two, course four uh, w was widely played by the membership. Both are up, member rounds on both golf courses are up over 20% for 2020. Um, and it's really due to April and May. Um, you know, resort rounds and member rounds across property are up 30 uh, percent. Resort rounds, I know uh, there's a member perception that there are far fewer mem uh, member tee times than there used to be. Um, so member uh, resort rounds are down 10 percent um, to prior years. So, you know, I think there is um, there's obviously we open up the tee sheet at number seven after two o'clock, um, you know, just to try to get some folks able to play more golf. Uh, that's what everybody's been trying to do. You know, it, we were very fortunate that Governor Cooper allowed us to to remain open, and, and so I think members who used to travel are not traveling as far, and they're staying home and they're playing golf here. So, you know, we're up positive 85 uh, members, as well as the more you know 30% in rounds. So I think that's some of our our tee time availability. Um, you know, is 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 at a premium. Um, I also want to remind the membership that April, May, September, and October, uh, Piners number two is allocated towards the resort. You know, that is our peak resort business tea times uh, or resort business wise. And so I think that, that uh, you know, it's always a little challenging when you come in and you don't, don't get to play it when you want and the time you want. Um, I know Cole and Brian and, and Matt Barcel and the golf team have done a great job trying to, 
get additional tee times. We monitor the system a lot more than, um, than most people think we do. Uh, it's, you know, we, we get the questions. We obviously uh, laid off a, a few of our golf employees this year that were not golf professionals, you know, in the starting tower. And we've kind of, you know, had to, to reallocate jobs. Um, so you probably hear from Tina and Shannon in the, uh, in the tea time office, and they've, they've done a really great job with, uh, with the tea time office this year. Um, we also I want to remind the membership that we're currently bound to 50% of the member tee times on courses one through six, excluding course number two. And we consistently give the members 60% a year, a day. Um, so, you know, I know there's, there's a perception out there that there's not enough member tee times. And, um, you know, we, we really try our best uh, and monitor the tee sheets to make sure that, that you get what you deserve. So there was a question asked regarding 30-day advanced guest tee time abuse, and um, is, there, is there an issue there? You know, I would tell you that the club staff is monitoring tee times um, and those members that are breaking the rules. Um, you know, what we've got to do is we've got to reach out to those members and, and alert them, and we've done that some this year. Um, you know, as, as Jen and, and, and Steve alerted earlier, um, we have had golf professionals during the pandemic working, working starter shacks, starting people, and I think that was very eye-opening for us as a, as a golf team. I think it was very helpful and, and um, you know, you really saw what was happening day in, day out as opposed to just being in the golf shop and running events. So um, we're going to keep our eye on that again as we move into the new, t new tee time system. Um, we've seen it. It's going to be basically internet-based. So you can see it on your, just like you do today, and um, uh, I think it's going to be very helpful, but we just don't have all that information at the current time. Um, and there was a question regarding can we get cradle tee times online in the future? As I mentioned earlier, all, all 10 of the golf courses, including the cradle, will be on the, uh, on the tee time system. There was also a, a question regarding member shotguns during the winter months. You know, we do this for the Men's Golf Association, Women's Golf Association, really all the golf associations starting in December, December, January, and February. Um, you know, right now, I think as, a, as far as the membership, you know, we would get more tee times available if you're doing straight tees and not, not, uh, not, not this time of year. Normally, um, and, and it also promotes gathering. So at this time, I think we're going to just kind of hold on that. We'll review it internally and see if it would make sense in the future. I do think the weather in December the last few years has been better. And so we're probably going to look at, um, you know, the, maybe starting the shotguns in January as opposed to December. Because I think, again, when you have, like Tuesday, for example, you've got, we've got an event on course number one. Two of our golf courses are closed and tee times are at a premium. So those are the kind of things that we've got to watch. Uh, as we're moving forward. Um, golf carts, you know, obviously single router golf carts were a, uh, a, a big thing in 2020, and I think it will continue for most of the 2021. Um, you know, we're reviewing um, the dividers in the golf carts uh, to see if that makes, makes sense and, and see if, um, if that will make, um, make folks feel comfortable with, with playing with someone from another household. So more to come on that. Um, and we also are getting brand new uh, lithium golf carts uh, next year in late summer with the hopes to increase, you know, obviously every, every day um, this year we've really been out of golf carts at six, seven, eight, and nine, uh, and some days at the main club depending on what's happening. So, you know, when we, when we renovated course number four, we took away golf carts with, the, with folks um, knowing that we were going to walk that golf course. And I think now it's, um, you know, once it's coming back up, we've got a new, um, we haven't decided yet, but we're going to get an upgraded cart with seats, with uh, USB ports, uh, GPS tracker and things like that. Not the GPS screen, but the GPS tracker just to make sure we know where the golf carts are at all times. Um, courses three and five, starting holes. Um, you know, the, we've, uh, we've basically... Um, Changed the way we, we did things for three and five. We put a starter building over there, which was asked by our employees and as well as the membership for our team. You know, at this point, we're comfortable continuing with course three and five in the place that it is. Um, I think Matt Barksdale, Matt Massey, and myself would love to uh, would love to make it a little different and build two starter shacks and have two buildings that are similar to what we offer on all the other golf courses. But as I mentioned earlier in, in you know, we're, things, are, things have changed a lot from 2019 and, and where we are. 
when you talk about room nights and when you talk about revenues. Um, and so we've got just, you know, do you want to build something that's going to make money or do you want to build something that's just going to, that you have to spend money on? So uh, we just really got to take and look at it and take a little bit of backseat on some of those things. And I think, um, you know, that's what we're going to do for now. Uh, we, we had, there was a question regarding transporting folks uh, or members to three and five starting holes. I'll definitely talk to Matt about that and see if that makes sense. Um, but I knew I know that the membership in, as a whole, you know, kind of likes to grab their cart and, and, and go to the range and do their own thing. So I'm not sure that transportation like that works, but, um, you know, it's something that we're going to look into. Um, and then again, you know, pin sheets, I think, have been a big ask for the membership. Um, and I think right, you know, right now we're not able to do that. Uh, we are going to look to put rakes and, and, and ball washers back on, um, you know, in the spring of next year. I just don't know exactly uh, the date yet, but we'll certainly allow you, uh, alert you when I know. Um, Jen mentioned earlier about the pool cart and trolley program. Um, you know, the trolleys, I was, I tell Mark, Matt Barstow this all the time, we were so lucky that we pulled the trigger on the trolley program when we did because we would have been in a world of hurt. Um, so they would have, you know, they've, they've gotten a lot of use and I think as we, uh, as we move forward, we know we're going to have to the replace those and refurbish those. Um, we're excited about the, the member trolley plan goes into effect January 1st. So if you have not signed up for that, please do so. Um, we, all, we purchased another 20 uh, pull carts to kind of put in the fleet because we had some that were, you know, less than ideal. So, you know, we're going to know we're, know we're going to start having to, to replace those. Uh, as we move forward, but very thankful that we were able to pull the trigger with that uh, with that program. Had uh, one last question on golf regarding uh, defibrillators, and if you remember, the the old uh, scorecards used to have the defibrillator locations on them. Um, you know, I think we're we have put it in the hands of the golf the golf staff that will be on site if someone. Um, you know, needs a defibrillator. So we have them across all of our properties. We have the appropriate amount. And uh, anyone, I, I just, I have a hard time thinking that someone's gonna look on the back of the scorecard and know where they are when they're having an issue. Um, so we just decided to change it that way. So we'll move into the facilities questions. Um, you know, I think parking was really the, I tried to categorize it all, all, all together, but parking was really the main uh, issue with our facility that I, that I uh, came out of the questions, you know, over the last couple of years with the renovations, uh, or you know, with the Beach Club and then also um, Piner's Brewing Company, you know, the village is going to dictate how much parking we need on this property, and we're going to work closely with them on that. Um, you know, they we didn't think that we needed as many uh, spots at the Beach Club as we put out there. And we did a closing, you know, we opened the Beach Club, I guess, September 15th or 17th, somewhere in there. And we did a closing weekend. And on that closing Saturday, we had music out there and lots of members show up and we had people parking um, all over the property. So, um, so I think, uh, you know, we, it, it's almost like umbrellas at the, at the pool or the Beach Club. You never have enough. Um, we're going to work hard to look at our tournament schedules and, you know, we do have some drive-in events that we, that we promote that we needed five years ago, seven years ago, but I don't think we, uh, at the current time, although we appreciate them wanting to come here and, and enjoy our property, I just don't think right now is the right time. Um, so, you know, trying to eliminate some of that drive-in golf traffic is, is, is going to be important for us. Clubhouse lighting. Clubhouse lighting has been, or, you know, outdoor clubhouse lighting has been a big, big, uh, you know, big thing for our membership, just walking around the facility. And so I think, you know, I, I, I leave at night sometimes out back and, and I agree. And um, we were very fortunate we were able to continue with that project. And, and we're putting a couple um, by the valet lot, a couple of poles out there and around the entire perimeter of Donald Ross Grill area around the back of the Deuce and the club here. So. Um, we're excited about that. Um, it's also going to, you know, the member where the cart parking is, um, kind of by the scoreboard there, everybody parks up front. Uh, we're going to have a pole out there as well just to kind of light that area up. So if you're coming in the Payne's Pub and having a beer or having food, uh, you feel comfortable that, you know, we've got cameras out there and then we've got adequate lighting when you're coming out. So I think that's going to be very helpful for us. Um, had lots of questions regarding the ladies and, and men's locker room downstairs. 
you know, I think we kind of we, we added new carpet a couple years ago downstairs, add some lighting to kind of make it look a little fresher uh, in regards to, you know, adding uh, memorabilia and things like that. And I think, you know, we're going to look at it and see what we can refresh. Um, again, we, we want to do the lower clubhouse area. It's just not on the list right this second. Um, but we'll make sure that it's up uh, up to the standard that we all wish um, would like to see. Um, number six clubhouse, you know, I, I've had some members ask me, when are we just going to take that off the, uh, the long range plan? Um, and I think that's, you know, I don't want to take it off the plan. Uh, it, it's something that needs to be done. And, and, you know, although 2020 will be a setback year for us, you know, we're going to look at, um, you know, some of the things that we had prior to this USGA announcement, um, you know, it aren't going to come to the fruition because of the USGA announcement. So, you know, things, what I'm trying to say is things change. And I think our, um, you know, a great example is the cradle was never on any of our long range plans. And it will, it will go down as one of the greatest things that ever happened to Piners. So I think, um, you know, please keep the hope alive, keep the faith alive on, on Piners number six. And we understand that that was a temporary clubhouse that was put there in 1979. And uh, we will we'll be excited at some point when we can finally do something out there. Number seven clubhouse, you know, it's, um, you know, since we purchased number nine and, and uh, or Piners National in 2014, um, you know, there was a commitment there when we made that purchase um, that we would, we would put money into Piners number nine. And so I think some of the members that live at number seven, you know, always think nine gets those things, but didn't necessarily know that that was, that was what it's about. Um, I've, walked the, I've walked the entire property with, with Calvin Berkeley, our project manager, um, you know, number seven does need to be painted. It does need new railings. Uh, it does need some new steps, and we're well aware of that. And hopefully, um, you know, we don't have a timeline yet, but I'm um, getting some quotes and starting the, kind of starting the process to see when can we get it on the list and, and how, how can we get it on the list. For those of you that live at number nine um, or are or, or signature members, you probably see that we've started some, some construction over there uh, regarding, we, we, earlier this year, we completed the drainage project to kind of, you know, there's obviously some issues with the building and having water intrude in the building. And so before we went and started fixing the building, we fixed the, the drainage just to make sure that water wasn't getting to where it needed to be. Now we're starting to dig and, and uh, really take a, um, you know, a look at what, what really needs to be done. Uh, basement and stairwell areas are going to be done in phase one, which is kind of what's happening right now. Uh, the kitchen area is going to be phase two. Uh, and then the ballroom cornerstone will be phase three with the completion by the end of 2021. So um, lots of work to be done over there um, in, in 2021. Uh, I'm excited because um, Earl Conte, the clubhouse manager, um, he's got a great eye for it. He wants to make it better. He, he, he really um, treats it like his own place, and that's that's what I do. And so I think, you know, between his smile and, and his hard work and effort and, and it's going to be, we're going to really make a, make an impact over there. You know, we've cleaned, we've power washed, cleaned the facility to the standards necessary. The kitchen's clean, the, the restaurant's clean and, um, you know, Earl's off to a great start. So really excited to have him on board. Um, and if you have not met him, please make sure you get out there and meet Earl. In the pit, so the pit is, uh, you know, always comes up when, when tea times are tight. Um, you know, we're, we're very fortunate to have a beautiful piece of property out there um, and for, at the pit for future growth. At this point, there are no definitive plans of any kind, um, but I can tell you it excites us because I think, you know, if we have another year just like this year membership-wise, which, you know, I think it's very possible, um, it's something that we're, we're certainly going to have to look into and, and figure out what, what we can do um, to, to have more golf for the membership and resort guests and all that stuff. So, um, Fitness center, so you know, we're committed at Olmstead Village until the end of next year and we'll look to, uh, to extend that lease until uh, a, little, you know, a few more years. Um, you know, I know that it's interesting because I never really thought that um, that the fitness center at Olmstead Village would really, you know, take off like it has. A lot of that is I think the members really, need, you know, we needed something better than what we had. And I think a lot of that's, in, you know, Christy Weaver and the job that her and her team have done out there and really making, you know, she does a great job with water aerobics and spin classes and just, you know, even this year she was doing things outside for the members. And so, 
you know, I think, um, you know, we need, we need a, a plan, overall plan for what's fitness going to be, what's croquet going to be, what's tennis going to be, and what's pickleball is going to be. And so um, we know that, and we're going to work towards that. Um, the marina. So obviously the Beach Club project um, was completed earlier uh, where we, we could open the Snack Shack in, in September. The pavilion was recently, um, was recently finished. Uh, and, and the facility looks great out there. Um, very excited to kind of have Nancy program it and have some events out there because I think it's, it's, it's exactly what we need, something different for teenagers and just to have a lake and a, and, and a, and a pool complex like we have is just tremendous. So uh, very excited about that. You know, there was some question regarding, um, you know, events out there as well as um, slips. You know, we, we definitely need more wet slips with a membership as big as, as, as we are. Um, but as we move forward, and like, like I mentioned earlier, we're not going to have zip lines. We're not going to have slides out there. Uh, we started looking at other, um, other things, a dock and, you know, some, some water amenities out in the, in the lake. So, you know, as we, as we learn more about that, we'll share exactly what we're going to do. But we do have some plans to add something in the spring of next year that, that would help. But it would not help boat slips at this point in time. And then I, we had some questions regarding signage across property. You know, Bob Farron and I um, met with Tom and Matt and try to figure out what's, you know, the golf courses individually, so two and four have their own similar identities. Um, but, you know, this, our, our signage around property has been here for 25, 27 years. And so as we build the, you know, new things with the USGA and the resort lodge and things like that, we're going to look, we, we've identified someone to, to give us a quote, but uh, we really got to got to set ourselves up for for the future, and I think that's what we're committed to do. Um, so that you know, like I said, our, our goal is to have the new signage plan in place by the 2024 U.S. Open. You know, if you you know, all of you have been around for the for the USGA Championships, they have their own signage plan during those championships. So, uh, but I think you know, as people come in the spring of 2024, fall of 2024, and beyond. You know, we're going to have a, an influx of folks come here and, and want, you know, they're expecting, we're, we're the greatest, you know, resort in the country. And so that's what we're trying to do is trying to elevate that, uh, this property to that. So we had a few questions regarding food and beverage. Um, not, not, a, not as many as I would thought, which makes me happy. Um, you know, four years ago when I took over this property as the club manager, the food and beverage was, uh, was not, not it's, it was not our brightest uh, shining star. So um, Chef Doug Knopp, um has, has done a tremendous job in the culinary world. Uh, food and beverage manager Jessica Cunningham and her team um, have really done a great job. You know, I know some of you in this room used to tell me, why do you do what you do, bussing tables and delivering food? And I don't think you see me do any of that anymore. And so I think that's, that's, the, that's the, a testament to all of them and, and what they're doing. Chuck Jones, who is our sous chef in the back, uh, he came from New York. Uh, we have a new banquet chef that's starting on Wednesday down from Florida. She was running a Japanese restaurant in Florida. Um, so we've got the best amount of talent we've ever had back there. And I, and I know Doug, Doug is over the moon excited, and so am I. And so we're really, um, you know, we're really thankful for the member support during 2020. And but it's it's always great when you have the restaurant full and and and. You know, the sur I'm excited for the member sur survey because I think the service and the food has definitely excelled um, in the past two years. Uh, so there was some question regarding dining program. So just kind of wanted to clarify the dining program. Uh, if you're on the dining program, there's, you know, social members can join as well as um, any other category. Uh, but you get access to 50% off food at the halfway house, beverage carts, the pool complex, the beach club, Clubhouses at seven and nine, and the main club dining here. So, if you're a social member and you join the dining program, you get to eat at Piners Number Seven Cornerstone at and in, in the corner, Cornerstone at Number Nine. Um, so, members receive 20% off uh, over at the Holly and the Carolina, and that's taken off the back of your bill. So, just make sure you keep that in mind. You know, we get lots of questions regarding the Deuce and the brewery and why there's no discounts there. Uh, there are obviously resort amenities um, that members have access to, but it's tough to have a restaurant that you would get a discount 
besides your, your restaurant that's dedicated directly to you. So I always tell membership, you have the best of both worlds. So you've got a great bar in the Deuce, and then you've got your own private club restaurant. So, um, but that's kind of what we, um, you know, how we look at it. And I know there's been lots of questions regarding dining uh, seven days a week here at the main club. We want to get back to Wednesdays. I myself want to get back to seven days a week. It's just uh, at this time, especially going in the winter, um, it's just not the right time. You know, our staffing levels that we brought back is, is six days a week here. Um, and so, you know, as Brian mentioned earlier, if you're, if you're dining on Wednesday and you want to go to seven and nine, that's av available to you, the brewery, uh, lots of our other resort outlets. Uh, but hopefully in the spring of 2021, we'll be back to seven days a week. It may be a little bit, a little bit later than that, but I'll try to keep everyone posted. Uh, and we had some questions regarding new cushions or outdoor furniture at Laddie's Court. Um, you know, I think we got those cushions probably 15 months ago, and we just got the wrong color, and they show dirt a little bit more. So we'll try to get some new ones, uh, new ones next year. Uh, technology and communication. So um, obviously a big one for us. You know, I think. Um, you know, we are, uh, we live in the dinosaur world sometimes regarding um, technology, but I think, uh, I know Ed Nicholson, our director of IT, has, has worked his tail off to, to, to get these upgrades. Um, but I'm very excited, you know, that we're going to have the online accounts receivable, um, new real-time tea time system, online bill pay, ability to have access to see your account usage, um, and then our staff, right? So our staff has to generate an Excel document and send a report to all of our staff. And so we're going to have access to having to generate our own reports by the click of a button as opposed to having to, to input data. And so, you know, we're going to be more efficient. We're going to, we're going to be able to um, take care of the membership better by having all those things. So I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about member compliance with dress code and, and COVID compliance. You know, I think, um, you know, dress code's always a big one, and I think the membership is, you know, we're, we've changed over the, over the last 10 years with members and, um, you know, adding the pool complex and different things, and things are more relaxed, you know. Uh, I think the big thing is hats inside the clubhouse. You know, you can wear hats in Laddie's Court and on the outside veranda. Um, we do see a lot of folks coming with T-shirts and sweatshirts and different things like that, and, you know, golf attire is, is what's appropriate. Um, you know, we're going to work hard. It, it's, it's, it is, it's hard because, you know, you got to remember that a lot of the members here may not have been members at other places. And so I think that's something that's, that we've got to train our staff as well as, as the membership. So, um, but I do need your help. We need your help in regarding, um, you know, COVID compliance. And if you've been around it, you know, we've worked really hard as a club uh, to remain open. I'm very thankful that we have remained open. And so, you know, if you've been exposed, um, you know, please, please make sure you, you, you do what the CDC recommends. Also wanted, before we close, I wanted to remind everyone to utilize their promotional card that was mailed out in, in June of this year. Um, the pro promo card may be used in all the Pinehurst outlets for retail, golf, spa, pool, and food and beverage before December 31st of this year. Um, if you're thinking about, also, if you're thinking about selling your property, you know, with the amount of properties that were, were sold earlier this year and still, still ongoing, uh, please make sure you reach out to the membership office to talk with us about it because I think, um, you know, we do have a split membership that, that has been widely used and, and widely criticized. But I think, you know, if you'll reach out to us and, and communicate with us that, because we don't know. The only way we know if you sold your house is when we look at it in the paper. So um, please, please, uh, you know, help us help you, so to speak, because we want every member in this room and that's watching today and that's here, we want, we want you to remain to be a member, uh, and we can help you do that. As I close, I would like to thank the great staff we have at Piners Country Club for all their hard work over the past year. I'd like to, you know, to note a, a few wonderful department heads that make your member experience a great one. Uh, Nancy Sadler, Jessica Cunningham, Chef Doug Knopp, Chris Manus, Chuck Jones, Brian Metter, Matt Barksdale, Brian Fahey, Cole Stiles, Matt Downing, Eric Alpenfels, Christy Weaver, Gina Brooker, 
Bob Farron, Kevin Robinson and his teams, and Earl Conte, who just, just joined us back over at 7-9. and nine. We've, we've, got the, we've got the greatest team that we've ever had, and, and I couldn't be more proud of, of what they do day in and day out. You know, the best part about Piners and Piners Country Club is the people and how they treat you. And I will be forever grateful for my team and what they've done this year. Thank you so much, and have a great rest of the year. All right, so we've been at this just about an hour and a half. I hope these updates have been beneficial to you, the members, so you know what your Board of Governors have done on your behalf. And I thank you, Ben, for taking the time to respond to the questions that you've received. Uh, and we appreciate your efforts and the efforts of your staff, as mentioned before. Ladies and gentlemen, may you all have a safe, healthy, happy holiday season this year. And I know I speak for all of us when I say we only hope 2021 is a whole lot better. Safe travels. Thank you for your membership at Pinehurst Country Club. Thank you for your support this year. This meeting is officially closed.